Good morning and welcome to our worship service. Uh, it is the fourth Sunday of Easter and we're worshiping here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ. And we have several announcements for you and it's gonna take a little bit of our time this morning but these announcements are important. The first one is that um, I would like to thank everybody for their uh, support and ministry here at the church. Uh, we received a letter uh, from our conference minister, Reverend John Vertigan, and I'm going to read excerpts from that letter and then also uh, an announcement regarding ministry here at the church. So, greetings, church. I'm writing from home today in the makeshift office space I created when we determined to close the office at uh, 9300 University, uh, which is in Orlando, in light of the governor's order to stay at home. I was reminiscing this morning about those days back in mid-March when we had conversations about how to collect the offering in church in a safe way, how to share communion, whether we should have greeters and ushers in place, and my uh, should we continue to pass the peace. It seemed unlikely at that early stage of this crisis that we would close our church buildings and cease offering public worship in the way we have so long associated with being the church. And then he says last week, the conference hosted a Zoom meeting to talk about when churches uh, plan to reopen and when it might be prudent to do so. In addition to what I gleaned from that meeting, I have also been paying attention to what is happening in the United Church of Christ around the country and what the science seems to bear out on a daily basis. And then yesterday, I myself was part of a, um, a meeting with pastors, uh, UCC pastors from the state of Florida, um, again together with our conference minister, Reverend John, John Verdigan, and this is what he's writing about that meeting. Um, the meeting confirmed uh, for me um, that folks want to meet in their buildings and that we shouldn't do just uh, that just yet. I don't know at this writing of a congregation in the Florida conference that plans to resume public worship on site in the month of May, and I personally recommend against it. Second, we are not alone in this. The same conversations are happening around the country in the United Church of Christ conferences, aiming to provide best practices to congregations everywhere. The stay closed in May guidance dominates um, the advice being given uh, by uh, my counterparts in every region of the United Church of Christ. In that light, the conference church house at 9300 University in Orlando will remain closed until May 31st, while we keep our eyes on the changing landscape of the COVID-19 crisis. Our staff will continue to work from home to meet your needs, um, even as uh, our local pastors are working hard to meet your community needs in new ways. So may it be with all of our congregations as we serve, uh, please continue to worship while uh, separated. Be at peace and be in touch, won't you? Reverend John Verdigan, uh, conference minister. So in light of this letter that we received, um, I would like to share with what our leadership uh, team uh, is announcing. Dear church family, your church leadership continues to monitor COVID-19 situation in our community, state and country. Following the guidelines of our state and Florida conference, Northport Community UCC will remain closed until June 1st. We will continue to monitor the situation. Our services will be available via YouTube on Sunday morning, and we encourage you to keep connected by watching. To view our services, visit our website, northportucc.org, and click on the View Current and Past Services link just under the church's picture on the right side of the page. The Sunday services are uh, filmed earlier in the week and is available at 10 a.m. on Sunday. This Sunday, May 3rd, <clears throat> um, today is uh, Communion Sunday, and uh, we have um, asked you to prepare your own elements, and so this would be actually a good time for you to get bread and juice ready as we're going to celebrate Communion later on. Um, so let's see here, for you, uh, those of you who have been asking if it's okay to mail or drop off your Sunday offering envelopes to the church, rest assured that the church mail is checked daily, as is the drop box by the office door in the back of the building. 
Your entire church staff continues to work during this time from home for the most part and at the church when necessary. Should you have any questions or concerns, please feel free uh, to contact the office staff via the office email, northportucc at gmail.com, or leave messages on the answering machine. So we ask you again to please check your email, Facebook, and the church answering machine uh, for any additional changes to the information above. In addition to this, um, I asked our staff, uh, as we're posting this notice on our door, to also add um, the Florida Domestic Violence Hotline number, which is 1-800-500-1119. And for those who are seeking AA support, um, to dial 941-426-2, I'm sorry, 426-7655. And the reason why, uh, because we want to make sure that if people come to our building and they're seeking this uh, sort of support, that they find the help that's needed. I found out at this um, meeting yesterday, and then later on doing some more research on it, that domestic violence, because of the stay-at-home order, has in some places risen by 30%. So we need to pray for our families in our own communities and around the United States. Uh, sincerely, your church leadership team, Pastor Attila, Sandra Van Bergen, our moderator, Patty Boger, Doug Minnick, Kim Campus, and Patty Bork. Thank you for your patient uh, um, attention to this. I do uh, want to add on a personal note that um, I think uh, I cannot hide the disappointment of the fact that we cannot continue public services uh, in our church building, but we're going to come out on the other side of this stronger in our faith and more united than ever before, and we're just going to have to be patient and trust God uh, with the next steps that are coming one day and one uh, faith step at a time. Stay safe. And at this time, we're going to hear the prelude.
O God, who makes all things new, speak to us as whole people today. May your truth touch not just our intellects, but also our deeper yearnings of heart and soul. We bring with us our daily concerns as, we, uh, as well as our more eternal questions. May your new creation in us shed light upon our everyday walk. Amen. We're going to continue our worship service with our opening hymn, hymn number 307, There Is a Name I Love to Hear. Um, Kimberly Campus and Brent Campus are leading us in this hymn, verses 1, 2, and 4 is what we sing. celebrating birthdays, and uh, tomorrow, May 4th, is Andrea St. Anja's birthday. Carolyn Perkins celebrates her birthday on Tuesday, May 5th, and Michelle Toop celebrates her birthday on Wednesday, May 6th. And we also have uh, anniversary, and that's again on Tuesday, May 5th. Wes and Marge Bates are celebrating and their wedding anniversary. So we are wishing you a wonderful day on your birthday and anniversary and on all days. Dear friend, please know you are a gift from God and we thank him for you today. We celebrate with you. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to Concerns. Uh, there is so much to pray about, um, and there is uh, power in prayer. I think uh, this is going to be a time and a season when our prayer life can really grow and uh, see um, just uh, the hand of God move in mighty ways. That's what we're looking for. We're asking you at home to call out your prayer request right now out loud as you're um, watching this service, participating in this worship service from home, why don't you call out your prayer request right now? If you like, you can stand while you do that. And um, I am going to just give a moment of time 
uh, as I am participating in this at home myself and uh, uh, watch it on Sunday morning uh, with you, I do the same thing. I, I call out those things that are important, um, and I tell them to God. That's what we're doing. We're uh, pouring out our heart before God. So let's take a moment, and why don't you do that? All right, let's bow our heads and turn to God and pray. Lord God, we believe that you uh, bend your ear uh, towards our cry, towards our words that we speak and that you listen. You have heard everything that has been spoken, uh, whether that be in a home office or uh, somewhere watching the service on an iPhone um, or in front of a computer screen or a TV screen. What matters is that the prayer doesn't go towards, um, towards a screen, it goes towards your heart. Uh, you take in every word that we speak because we are your children and you are concerned about our lives and the details pertaining to everything um, from, um, from our family's well-being to uh, the anxiety that we might experience to the fears that we are putting before you this morning, um, the great unknown, Lord. Uh, we're so grateful this morning that we have a Lord who does not change and who hears every word that's being said at this very moment. And even the things that we are maybe um, still too timid to speak out, you have heard even the unspoken things that are in our hearts and minds that are occupying us right now. We're going to pray, Lord God, for the sick and those that are infected. God, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. And we pray that you contain the spread of infection. We pray for our vulnerable population. God, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. For the young and the strong, we pray, Lord God. Give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire them to help. For our local, state, and federal governments, God, help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. Help them to provide more tests. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity. God, give them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice. For the media, committed to providing up-to-date information, God, help them to communicate with appropriate seriousness without causing panic. For consumers of media, looking to be well-informed. God, help us find the most helpful local information to equip us to be good neighbors. Keep us from anxiety and panic and enable us to implement the recommended strategies, even at the cost to ourselves. Lord, we pray for those with mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless. God, provide them with every necessary support. For the homeless, unable to practice uh, the protocols of social distancing in the shelter system, protect them from disease and provide isolation shelters in every city. For international travelers, maybe still stuck in foreign countries, God help them to return home safely and quickly. For the Christian missionaries throughout the world, especially in areas with high rates of infection, God, provide them with words of hope and equip them to love and serve those around them. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support. For families with young children at home for the foreseeable future, God, help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single mothers and fathers, grow their network of support. 
and then for parents who cannot stay home from work but must find care for their children, God present them with creative solutions. For those in need of regular therapies and treatments uh, that must now be postponed, God help them to stay patient and positive. Lord, for business leaders in our own community here in Northport, leaders making difficult decisions that affect the lives of their employees, God, give these uh, women and men wisdom and help them to lead self-sacrificially. For our churches, Lord, put your shield around your people. Help us to grow in our faith and learn our lessons and trust. For college and university students uh, whose course of study are changing, whose placements are canceled, whose graduation is uncertain, God, show them that while life is uncertain, the trust is in you. For Christians in every neighborhood of Northport, community and city, may your Holy Spirit inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve, and to proclaim the gospel that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. And then for those on the front line of health care, our health care workers, we thank you for their vocational call to serve us. We pray and that you help them in their service. Lord, you have heard every prayer request and everything that has been spoken at home. Thank you that you are listening. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. Dear friends, uh, we're looking at the scriptures again uh, this morning from John chapter 20. I will be reading to us, but starting with verse 24. And I'm going to read uh, through verse um, 31. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail prints in his hands and put my finger in the nail prints and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside with the door shut, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand here and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You know, as I was preparing for this service, I um, thought, boy, what a long prayer list. And I could have gone on easily, much longer, going down the list of needs in our own community, maybe even in our own lives. And it's good for us to pray. It's good for us to do, uh, pause and turn to God and pour out our hearts to him. Today is my part two of a message that I did a few Sundays ago, part one on prayer. And I'm going to just briefly repeat a few things we talked about, and then we will continue with this study. But before we do that, why don't you turn to God in the silence of your heart and um, ask him uh, to minister to you? Lord, we thank you that we can put all disturbing uh, factors now aside, whether on the inside or around us, to fully focus on what you have for your people on this fourth Sunday of uh, Easter. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. So we said a few weeks back that um, the Bible has a lot to say about prayer. We said that the Old Testament alone uses 19 and the New Testament 14 different expressions describing prayer. And we thought prayer was just simply prayer. I think these days we are finding out um, how challenging it can be to pray, how to stay focused when we are praying. And um, we uh, said that um, it is so important to, to keep this um, line of communication open between God 
and ourselves. It is a dialogue between the living God and us. And it is a privilege for us to pray and um, for us to um, do petitioning and interceding. And we said on, in that message a while back that it literally translates as laying in between. There are two sides um, uh, that are here and uh, we are mediating uh, between that other individual who needs the prayer support and God. We're helping out the best we know how. Um, this past week, I uh, called on several people to say, help me to pray for this certain thing. I even called somebody in Europe and say, please pray. This is such an urgent matter. I know we all have those right now, don't we? Urgent things that need, need prayer covering, prayer support. So let's focus on this part that we can pray. This is a truth that I think needs to become real big for us in this season. The realization that we are allowed to, that we can, and that we should pray. The condition of mankind is described in a book um, the following way. The author is illustrating the situation of humanity through a dream that he had. And I'm going to read this to us now. In his dream, he was in a big official building, a city hall of sorts, maybe. It had a long hallways. It had a long hallways with many different doors. He went to the first door, uh, turned the doorknob, and found it locked. The same with the next door. And the door after door, as he was going down that long hallway, he came to the end uh, of the hallway, found um, uh, steps going down, and the other side going up, and there was another hallway, and again there were more doors. And finally, as he was trying to open a door again, and that too was locked, he exclaims in despair, so many doors and not one open for me. So many of us um, in today's circumstances are feeling that. I'm hearing that from people, saying that I'm waiting for that open door, for that open possibility. And uh, indeed, so it is that God has given us an open door, and this open door is this communication with him, this time of prayer that we now uh, can uh, take advantage of and um, not be hurried with prayer, but take our time to sit there in silence, be still and know that I am God, and wait uh, for uh, that uh, voice of God to speak to our soul and to our heart in our time of need. Years ago, I was... Um, uh, ministering or talking to a lady who was heading up a uh, ministry for uh, children uh, that um, it was called the Blessing House. And um, this was a Catholic nun, and she was the head of this ministry. And she was telling me the story about a grandmother who was raising her grandchild. But she had to go to work one day, and the babysitter just posted a note on the door, sorry, not tonight. Sorry, not tonight. I cannot watch your child tonight or your grandchild tonight. Again, a closed door. And for us as Christians, it is so important that with our God, we have an open door. There might be other doors that are closed right now, but with our God, we have uh, an open door, a possibility to come into his presence. And I'm going to read some scripture to us um, this morning and the first one is going to be from Luke chapter uh, 11. So let's start out with Luke chapter 11. It says, verses 9 through 10, And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. You know, the Bible does not put down a single word that is not meant to be there. You know, we just read it in the Gospel of John that there were many more miracles that Jesus did and many more things that um, we could have written, that could have been written down about him, teachings that he said. But no, not all of that has been written down. But what has been written down has been written down that so you and I that are reading it would believe. So seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone, did you notice that? Who asks, receives, and who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. 
The other day I was praying with someone for a major thing, for a big breakthrough. And the story that came to my mind is about the persistent widow that goes to this attorney and she keeps knocking at the door. The same image that Luke puts here before us. And um, because she's so persistent and she doesn't give up, finally he gives in and takes her case. Persistence in seeking and asking and knocking and God will answer. And then, you know, um, God welcomes us when we are turning to him in prayer. He's waiting for that time of intimacy between his child and him as his creator. We are the created ones. He is the creator. In Luke 6, 37, it says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. You know, we carry so many unnecessary burdens in this life. For unforgiveness is one of those things. Or even judging other people. You know, oh, they should be doing this or they should be doing that. Prayer is a time to let all of that go. And he's welcoming us. I love that hymn that we sing, Just As I Am. This past week, I talked quite a bit about the fact that we as human beings, we need to know that we are loved. We don't want to just guess that or uh, suspect that we are loved, but we need to know that we are loved. And each one of us, you at home watching this service today and participating in, your, in the privacy of your home, dear friend, I know that you and I, all of us, we yearn to be loved for who we are, not for what we can produce or do or give, but of who we are. And Jesus welcomes us just as we are. When we come to him in prayer, he has a big welcome sign up. We've seen that, haven't we, at airports. Somebody comes back um, from a place of conflict, having served our country, and a whole bunch of people are waiting at an airport with balloons and signs. I've seen it at the Detroit airport on one occasion, years ago, welcoming the one home who defended the country in whatever hotspot of the world he was in. Welcome home. As a child of God, God is welcoming you into his presence with your prayer requests. And then, you know, the title of my message today is Thoughts and Prayers. We've heard that, haven't we? Somebody saying, well, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. It becomes, it's part of um, a phrase that we use to just say, oh, we stand with you, we are supporting you. And there's nothing wrong with this statement, but it uh, warrants clarif clarification. And it is this. Thoughts and prayers are not the same thing. Prayer is something very specific. Self-conversation and thought does not equal prayer. For self-conversation makes us stand in front of ourselves. But if we pray, we stand as the created in front of the creator. It's a completely different story. We're turning to someone who can do something about what we are going through. So in Matthew 5.19, it says, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, uh, this teaching about prayer, for example, is now making us, as his followers, responsible to um, not to have thoughts, good thoughts, positive thoughts alone, but to take it a step further and pray and make a difference in that way. And then the next thing is um, uh, in, this, um, in these thoughts about prayer that our uh, petitioning is a great necessity. A moment ago I said how I called on several people, three to be precise, to say, help me pray for this one thing. And then throughout the day, I literally would just, you know, be busy doing something, and God would literally um, lead me to kneel down next to the couch I was sitting on or wherever I was and to pray. 
I don't know about you, but I'm not too proud to, to kneel. I'm not too proud to humble myself before God and say, Lord, I am completely dependent on you. That's a good statement to make. For us as a nation today, for us as a community of believers here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ, or as individuals and families to say we are completely dependent on God and we're not too proud to admit it. There are so many great needs in our society. I can guarantee that if I would have right now opportunity to talk to you in person, like we so often do, we open up after communion and say, I won't be greeting people in the back, but I will be standing here and praying. If I would open that up, I can imagine so many of us having so many pressing prayer requests. We've heard about these great um, summit meetings where people come together and make big decisions. Let's say about world peace, for example. As Christians, we can have a summit meeting with our God, Creator, whenever we feel like it, whenever we want to. And we can send our prayers around the world. Isn't that amazing that a moment ago we just prayed for the missionaries of this world who are serving in difficult circumstances? We prayed for our healthcare workers. And we know that God hears. And then somebody just sent me a note saying, Pastor, we're doing quiet time. We're reading these devotionals. And we're focusing. We're tuning in. We're watching. We're being part of what is happening on a spiritual level. You know, we look around and we see what's happening on a political level. We see what's happening on a scientific level. But we pray that God would open up our eyes that we would see what's happening on a spiritual level. In these days, this is in Luke 6, 12 through 13, it says, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Imagine that, all night. So I don't know when he went out, but he went, let's say he went out at 10 o'clock. And he spent all night in prayer. That would make it, what, 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, you say, well, that's Jesus. He can do that. Well, all these things have been written down to teach us, to show us, to give us an example. I have read somewhere that the Bible, uh, from when it was started, when they began, um, from this, um, from the beginning, when they started translating the Bible into English. We now have 450 English translations of the Word of God. Imagine that. I didn't even think that's possible. 450, really? There are so many different translations of the Scriptures. Somebody once said about prayer that the hand that pauses for prayer, God can use for strong action. We don't want to be powerless or discouraged. You know, I said at the beginning of our service today that I can't hide my disappointment about not being able to um, assemble in our physical building for a while yet, for a little while yet. Trusting God. Great lessons that we're learning right now. We can ask God for the big things and the small things alike. You know, I said when you call our prayer line either on Wednesday or Sunday morning that no prayer request is too big and no prayer request too small for God not to care. If we ask God, we're trusting in God. For God is great in the great and great in the small things as well. He wants to hear everything about our lives. You know, if we think about our earthly fathers, I remember, you know, my daughter coming to me and asking me, can you put on my shoes, Daddy? It's a small thing, isn't it? But I remember it vividly, and I would do it for her. And later, you know, when she's going to come and ask, should I marry this guy? I would say, probably, he's not the right one. Not yet. Putting on shoes is a small thing. Asking, is this the right guy to marry? 
is a big thing. But as an earthly father, we give best advice. We know how. Our Heavenly Father, in communion with Him, in communication with Him, gives us perfect advice. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are assembled in my name, there I am in their midst. I was thinking about that scripture when I called two or three different people. Even somebody in Europe and said, please pray for this. We need to do that more. And then in Proverbs 28, 9, it says that when we pray, we should not shrink back. We should consistently go on and not give up when we pray. And then, of course, we do not live by uh, sight, but we live by faith. Christ is our advocate. It says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you. This is in 1 John 2, 1, um, so that you do not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. You have an advocate before the throne of God, and that's Jesus. And then in Romans 8, 34, the final scripture that I have for us today, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, yes, who is risen, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. I'm going to talk about the power of prayer just real briefly through this story that I read some time ago. James David Ford, chaplain of the United States House of Representatives, um, uh, starting in 1979, told the following story about prayer to Leadership Journal. In the spring of 1976, I sailed the Atlantic Ocean with a couple of friends. In a 31-foot vessel, we sailed from Plymouth, England to New York, 5,992 miles. During the trip, uh, we hit a real hurricane. Some of the waves were 35 feet high. And frankly, I was scared. My father had said, don't go. You have five children. Wait till they are grown. The hurricane went into its third day, and I thought of my father's words about the children. I thought, why am I out here? Was this thing that I thought was courage and adventure really just foolhardiness? The skies were black, and the clouds were scudding by. I wanted to pray for God to stop the storm, but I felt guilty because I'd voluntarily gotten myself into this. I didn't have to go across the ocean. Finally, I came up with a marvelous prayer, seven words. O oh God, I have had enough. Amen. Within half an hour of that simple prayer, the sky in the west lifted, like a screen in a theater, and there was a blue sky. Was my prayer tied to the opening of the sky? I don't worry about it. One thing is certain. Simple, sincere prayers are sufficient. Amen. We're going to confess our faith uh, like we always do when we take communion together. I hope you were able to uh, prepare your elements at home, um, the juice or the wine and the bread, and um, we confess our wor our, through the words of the Apostles' Creed what we actually believe. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of, of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord, Lord who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and, and was buried. He descended he to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus said, I am the living bread who came from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give uh, for the life of the world. Dear friends, as you are joining uh, in this morning, the Lord's Supper is a way to celebrate our intimate relationship and connection in our relationship with Jesus. It is an ongoing relationship. And we gather as followers of Jesus, and let's just take a moment of silent time of meditation, considering and then confessing our sins to our Lord and Savior. Lord, we do thank you that you hear our prayers and that you are forgiving us our sins. We worship you and we thank you. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's what we're doing together as the body of Christ. The body of Christ broken for us. In the same manner, after he had supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes again. And now take the cup, the cup of the new covenant, representing his blood, shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, what a privilege to be able to come before your throne of grace and partake of the precious sacraments of bread and wine bread and juice, the fruit of the wine, in remembrance of your atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for dying for us on the cross and paying the enormous price for our sins so that we may be forgiven of all our faults, all our sins and shortcomings, and receive your indwelling life. May we never forget the enormous price that was paid on our behalf. May we never forget that we have been bought with a price, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we live for him from this day on, knowing that his body was broken and his blood was spilled for us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We have shared in the Lord's Supper, you are his and he is yours. Amen. We're going to hear some special music prepared for us. Our soloist is Kimberly Campus, Love of God.
Thank you uh, for that great reminder, uh, Kimberly. What a wonderful song, really, um, because if the love of God rests on us um, and we can experience that love of God with communion with him, we just have that, or through prayer, we spoke about that, and then we can rest if the love of God rests on us. I would like to uh, just uh, tell you that next Sunday is Mother's Day, and we're asking you to send in your tributes uh, and a photo if you would like to honor um, mothers, grandmothers, anyone who played a role of a mother in your life. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Please send that in by Tuesday evening, the latest, uh, and we will put it together in a way so um, that we can see it. All right? Uh, so if you'd like to participate in that, uh, that would be great. And now let's receive the benediction. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm thankful to our team who made it possible to put this worship service together. God bless you. Stay safe. And we connect again. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. temptation, but deliver us.